Let's speak to a former student activist and now ANC member of the provincial legislature, Fasina Hassan. Ms. Hassan, thank you for being with us. Uh, what, do you, what do you think of journalists being asked to leave? Your response to that? Frankly, I'm shocked. Um, the fact that a university, which is meant to be a space not just for academic freedom, but for freedom of thought, of discussion, of, of debate, of dialogue, um, is preventing media from entering its premises. I mean, even in the height of 2015, 2016, fees must fall. We relied so much on you and your colleagues to help us tell our story. We may not have always agreed with how that story was told, uh, but the reality is you cannot at all in any circumstance um, prevent the media from doing their job. Um, so often yeah. When we talk about the important elements of, this, of, of the state or country, the media plays a fundamental role in, like you said, exposing what's going on on all sides. So, frankly, I'm shocked and quite disturbed. Um, and I think it's a very bad decision uh, from the university if, if that is the case. I must say, as a, a journalist, I agree. Let's look at the overall issues. I presume you sympathize with the students. Uh, and uh, going back to 2015, I mean, in fact, the issues are pretty much the same, aren't they? Yeah, I think that's the, the disturbing part or the more disappointing part. Um, if you look at some of the demands we made in 2015-16, uh, they're being made today. And it really does emphasize the same thing we said before. Um, and that is that these issues are so structural. Um, they are beyond a bits there, beyond a UJ, a UCT. In some ways, they may even be beyond the current legislation. Um, and that then begs the question, Francis, what do we do now? Um, where, do we, where do we take it forward? Because we can't continuously put students through the absolute most um, to, to be colloquial about it. Um, but we also can't continuously pretend that there's sustainability in that, how higher education is run. Um, if it was sustainable, you wouldn't see students have to take to the streets. Um, so there's a real need to be creative, to think differently, but also to force action. Um, and I mean this from the corridors of the university to the corridors of DHET, but also to the corridors of, of, pri of the private sector, um, who also has a role to play in funding higher education in some, some shape or yeah. form. Um, so for me, it's, it's a reiteration, very disturbing, but really forcing us to do something about it. Okay, so we know some of the issues are, are real, students are suffering. Is the violence justified? We've just brought up some visuals and it is clear that some of the students are throwing stones. It's a difficult one for me to answer. I'm never going to throw students under the bus. I think we must be very clear the kind of trauma they're going through um, and the kind of difficulties they're facing. Nobody goes to protest for fun. Nobody protests as a first point of call. That being said, uh, we don't want institutions or any infrastructure to be damaged. Um, at the end of the day, we, again, we said this uh, in, in, in the past, you don't want a situation where tomorrow you get your demands met and then you don't have an institution or an infrastructure uh, to really utilize. So there is a balance um, that needs to be struck. But one must never vilify the marginalized group or the group that has the less power dynamic. Um, and that really is the student grouping. Um, we really need to be open and honest about what they're going through, but also open and honest about the fact that so many people are passing blame. Um, if you look at the university and how they've said, well, it's not our fault. If you look at the state that's saying, well, students and um, universities are autonomous, they can decide their own fee increments, et cetera, et cetera. It really puts a poor student really between a rock and a hard place. And what are we saying as South Africans, that that person must just give up because they're poor, um, that they just mustn't have an opportunity at studying because of the same reason? No, yeah. uh, we really have to do something about it. Uh, the, the argument on the other side is, though, that there's been disruption, disruption. Some students weren't allowed to enter because now there's violence. So they aren't allowed to um, study if they don't have a fight about fees. It's, is that fair enough? Two things. Protest by its very nature is disruptive. It wouldn't be a protest um, if it wasn't disruptive, right? Let's be clear on that. Um, but the second matter is that there's nobody fighting other than the students who are on the ground now. Nobody's fighting for the constitutional right of poor students who've been financially excluded regardless of their um, academic results, which we can speak to in a moment. But nobody's fighting for their constitutional right to study. Nobody's fighting for their abilities. Um, and if we zero in and have a reductionist lens, we're going to fall victim to very much what is the South African story, which is that those who are very privileged and have always had opportunities will always be looked after and taken care of. And those who come from marginalized parts of society who are extremely poor, the underclass, will always, always, always um, be forced to be buried in that underclass. So I want to go, uh, move away from this, this they or them kind of thing, firstly. 
I want us to zero in on the major structural issues and then also hold the true people to account or the the true structures or institutions to account because we can't blame students for wanting an education. We can't blame students for going onto the streets, uh, but we can blame the system for not providing enough funding, for not for providing enough support or accommodation opportunities uh, or even um, textbooks or even food. I mean, yeah. when we were in the SRC, we, we did all these studies and we found that students are extremely food insecure and nobody's talking about that or linking those issues to what we're seeing on TV screens now. Yeah. Uh I understand it. It's so difficult. But this protest is against wits, right? When government promised that fees would ultimately come down. Is the anger directed at the right party? And let's just look at what Wits is saying, that, that it's done all it can. It matches SRC fundraising. It's found more bids. It's done all it can with the caveat that government is not giving students free accommodation and it still needs to run. Um, it says the 150,000 debt write-off would, would basically sink the institution. Mm. Again, there's a, there's a balance to be struck here. So the university does have a bigger role to play in providing different types of student support. So it's not just about throwing money at the issue. Um, I think we've done that. We've put a lot of money, we think, um, into higher education, and yet we're still seeing the same outcome. So it goes beyond that. It goes towards institutional culture, et cetera, et cetera. But there's also an opportunity for Wits University here to say, well, actually, we understand what students are saying, and we're going to join arms with students, and we're also going to say to the state, and we're going to say to the private sector, that you need to play your role. How often do we see private companies, and I'm going to get to DHET in a moment, but how often do we see private companies who offer five bursaries and think, oh, wow, well, by corporate social investment, all done, all happy, um, when in reality, that's a drop in the ocean. Uh, we know two-thirds yeah. of the economy sit there. So we need right. them to be a lot more involved because they get the top cream of the crop of graduates and get also dissociated from the process. Now, that does not absolve DHET um, or the department from the role that they also need to play. Um, and if you'll allow right. me, Francis, one last point on it very quickly. Institutional autonomy is very important. We must never, ever attack that. But what that also means is that the Wits University can set a very high fee increment. Um, they can decide how they fund the institution, etc. And while that sounds okay, it does often lead to the situation that we're seeing now. And that is a situation in which the poor working class student is frankly lost through the cracks. All right. Well, we appreciate your, your time. This is something that we will continue to follow closely. Uh, that was uh, Fasina Hassan, a former student activist, now an ANC member of the provincial legislature.